Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be our last experiment for Unit 2. Uh, now, thinking back to our previous work, uh, none of this makes any sense if we think about the batteries as being a supplier of charges that move around, because then when there is no battery, we put a capacitor in the circuit, there is no supplier of charge, how does this work? But what hopefully we were able to decide that we can agree on is that this can make sense. What we've seen with the capacitor can make sense if we think about the battery not as a supplier of charge, but the job of the battery is to push the charges that were already there. Um, there were already charges in the wire, there were already charges in the light bulb, in the sockets, in all of these materials, charges were already there. They just needed to be pushed. And so the battery is able to push charges. Um, and thinking in that context, um, let's look a little bit more closely. I'm going to look at, here I have a one cell battery, and I just have, I have my wire, instead of being clipped here, um, then in order to actually complete the loop, I have it clipped here because this spring connects over to this end of this battery. So when I complete this circuit with just one cell instead of three cells, then ooh, if we look, these two bulbs are pretty dim. Uh, and if I look at how much the compass deflects, I've got dim bulbs and my compass deflects clockwise just a little bit. Now, if I add a second cell to my battery, now each battery pushes. So now I've got two batteries to push instead of one battery to push. And the bulbs go a little brighter uh, the compass is turned. Maybe you can't tell, did it turn more or less than last time? But if I put the... Here is one cell. Here is two cells. And one cell. Two cells. Without reading it, it looks to me like the needle turns a little further with two cells. And then if I do three cells, the bulbs are clearly brighter. So there's the compass needle at three cells, at two cells, and at one cell. So it looks like more battery cells makes for brighter bulbs and makes for more compass turning, more compass deflection. And if compass deflection is representing the amount of flow of charges through the wire, then with more cells to push, then I get more flow of charges and I get brighter bulbs. Um, now, to reinforce this idea of pushing, the job of the battery is to push the charges. Here I have two light bulbs. Oh, this is a little tangled up, I'm sorry. Two light bulbs that are connected to this device that I call a Genicon. It's just got a hand crank on it. Because if the job of a battery is just to push charges, then maybe there are other ways that I can push charges. And so I'm just going to turn this crank, and I can see the faster I turn the crank, the brighter the bulbs glow. Uh, just like one cell versus two versus three cells, the faster I turn, 
then the more I'm pushing charges. So like if I wanted to match the brightness of these two bulbs, if I wanted to match the brightness of my bulbs in the one cell circuit, I'm not perfect because it's pretty much impossible to keep a constant pace here. Or if I wanted to match the brightness of two bulbs, You can see I'm clearly turning faster now. And if you count seconds in the video, you could even work out how many handle turns each second to maintain that brightness. Or if I did three, matching the brightness of three cells, you can see that I had to turn even faster. Um, if we wanted to look at the compass needle, then we could see here, oops. You know what, never mind, this is a little too hard to do it with just two hands to hold the wire and the, the uh, Genicon. So um, we're just gonna make some assumptions about how brightness and compass turning match up. Um, and so we can see here, bottom line of all of this is that we can see with this circuit with red wires, uh, we can see with these two bulbs, there is no battery, um, but I'm pushing the charges with this Genicon. Uh, and so the job of a battery isn't providing charges. The charges are already there. It's pushing the charges around this circuit. Uh, that's what makes the bulbs glow. Likewise, there is no battery here, but I push charges and I can push faster or slower to uh, make different brightnesses and make different rates of flow of charge. And so this also probably means that we're going to need to revisit our initial definition of what a circuit is because a circuit we had defined as a closed continuous conducting pathway that has a battery in it, but I feel like this should count as a circuit, but there is no battery. So maybe we need to revisit exactly what we mean by the term circuit. Um, but we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.